everything that I have going on, I really took a break the month of December, or really the last two, three weeks of December. So I'm ready to jump back in next week. I'm trying to come up with my yearly theme. I think I have the theme. <coughs> I also had a little cold too that is hanging around. But I'm trying to come up with my yearly theme. And before I would pressure myself to have it by December 31st, but last year and now this year, I don't have my theme yet. I think I am leaning towards one, but I have to see if that feels right for me. My last year's theme was Elevate and Grow. I'm not quite sure what my theme this year is going to be. So you guys make resolutions or do you choose themes? I don't do resolutions because I don't know. <clears throat> just never was a resolution type person I used to do them but a lot of times you make resolutions and then by the middle of January they are forgotten so now I just stick with themes something that can guide me through the years guide me through each year just something I keep at the front of my mind so I am working on coming up with my yearly theme right now along with getting everything else I need to do scheduled. Yeah, it's basketball season in our life, so things get even more hectic for me when basketball season is in full swing. And that is where we are. I'm outside waiting to go into this game that starts shortly and figure what better time to go live. I know I used to go live a lot and haven't done that lately. Because going live, especially for a long period of time, it takes a lot of your energy. People don't realize how much content creation going live takes energy. And I'm an introvert, believe it or not. So this stuff easily drains me. But how's everyone's New Year so far? What are your, do you have New Year's resolution? Do you have a theme for the year? How is, has your new year been three days into the new year? How are things going for you? I will say for me, it's a lot to celebrate. But then also, at the same time, hey, Steph, how are you? You hopped on at the right time because this is going to be a quick live since I got to go in this basketball game. But. I was just about to say that this year has been good so far, three days in, but then at the same time, there's been a lot that has happened. Yesterday, two people that I have known, oh, excuse me, two people that I have known since childhood passed away. One was older than me, one was around the same age as me, but to have two people that were kind of in the same church gospel music circle that I was in for years pass away on the same day that was a rough day and it just makes you think yes yeah, Steph Steph knows them too but yeah it just makes you think of the brevity of life and just how grateful we are and thankful we are to have made it to a new year and then if we see the thing that happened with Hamlin last night those of us that were watching the game because my if you don't know my husband and my son are both big Buffalo Bills fans, so the games are always on in my house. And to watch that and see that happen, that was another thing. I was like, wow, it's a lot. It was a lot of emotion yesterday. A lot. It's like we're only the second day into the year. But I feel like things like that kind of happen so that we can see them and realize not to take our time for granted. A lot of times we put stuff off. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll wait. I'll reach out and talk to that person tomorrow. I'll hit them up later, whatever it may be. But things like that happen to show that tomorrow's not promised for anybody. The next minute isn't promised. If we take, thankfully, with Hamlin, he was resuscitated. It seems like he's in the hospital, critical condition, all that. But how quick he made that tackle and was out. And luckily they had the equipment and were able to do what they needed to do. But that just shows you how things change in a split second. So it's not even, we used to say tomorrow's not promised, tomorrow's not promised. But these days, the next minute is a promise. It's kind of wild. 
Good afternoon, Dominique. How are you? But yes, yeah, so I feel like those things kind of happen to us so that we can see it and really focus on what matters. And yesterday was like, life really matters. That is what matters at the end of the day. Not the followers, not the content we create, not the sports that we play, how the wins and the losses, it's life. And I think with everything that happened between the two people that I lost that I knew from childhood to what everyone witnessed national TV, it just shows you the importance of life and living life to the fullest. And that's what I do every day. Oh, thank you, Steph, for the paper crane. So those things that happen in a new year, new season, for those of us that are goal-oriented, really to help us refocus what is important, what matters, what, like, yeah, what is important in life? Not the money, not the fame, but the relationships, the legacy, the people we impact. Those are kind of things that matter the most. But yeah, yesterday was a very heavy day for me. It's like I woke up, saw one person that passed. Then like three, four hours later, saw that another one passed. And that was closer to my age. If not, I don't, we might be the same age or she might have been a couple years older than me. But either way, 40 years old and to see that. I know that she has a child that is the same age as my oldest child. It's like, wow. Wow, like what really matters? Wow, you had a crazy incident New Year's Eve. It is. Life is fleeting and can be gone in a second. But to God be the glory, you are still here, Steph. And then I see people questioning things like, well, why... Did this happen and why did that happen and why this person and why that person the why is really not for us to know if you have been around here for a while you know i'm a god girl always talking about god god knows that's what it is the why is not for us it's not for us to question why things happen it's for us to take from those things that we see happen and really buckle down on what matters. Are we making the most of each day? Are we making memories with our family? Are we enjoying our lives? Not just working ourselves into the ground. And all of that. Are we taking time to enjoy the moment? Taking time to make the memories that matter? Those are the kind of things that you can take away from losses and tragedy and all of that. Those are the takeaways from it. Because if we think about it... <clears throat> Everybody was caught up. We go back to the football game. Everybody was caught up in, oh, this is the biggest game. This game is going to determine so much in the, I think, the AFC East. I don't know. Don't start me quoting them. But this game is going to determine so much. Both of these teams are, yeah, both of these great quarterbacks that are facing off. Both of these teams uh, have been on a win streak. This is going to be a tough game. It's going to be a great competition. That's all that was heard. And then in the first quarter, what happened, happened. And it put life back in perspective. Listen to the commentators talk. The game don't matter at that point. Nobody cared about what their record was, who was going to win. It was the human side of things. And I think that is what we take away from that. It did. It ha And it happened. That's the thing. It happened so quick. And the other part of that was when you look at the tackle, it didn't even look that bad. Like a lot of times there's a warning and that's the thing. And I feel like that's the other part of it because a lot of times there's a warning. But that being on national TV showed how a lot of times there's no warning for things. It just happens. Let's say you got to be ready. <laughs> Always got to be ready. Because you look at the hit, it doesn't look bad at all. You see him get up. He like cheering that he made the hit, then falls. Lost a heartbeat. Had to be resuscitated. They said CPR for nine minutes or so. Imagine being on that field watching that. And I think that's the thing because there's always that when you see a foot when you see a hit in foot, especially in football where you're watching on TV, you see a hit 
and it's usually like a helmet to helmet or something when you see somebody go down it's like oh helmet to helmet their neck or some type of bad kind of thing you can do the playback and see their leg go a certain way but with that it just looked like a regular tackle he gets up and then falls out and there was no warning so that may be the message in there a lot of times there's no warning in life as Steph just said, life is fleeting. Things change in a second. And they can change for the good and can change for the bad. That's another part of it. When we think about goals and think about life and living, not just thinking about the brevity of life in passing, but think about the brevity of life and living. Steph, you got to be preaching on here with stuff you say. <laughs> And I wasn't even planning on this, but look at God. But think about that with living. Life is fleeting. As Steph said, it can be gone in a second, but it can also change for the better in a second. So we think about those of us that have been on the push, been on the grind, trying to perhaps make dreams happen, get ourselves together, whatever it may be, personal journeys, business journey, work, career, school, whatever it may be, it can change in a second. Especially in this social media age, it could take one thing, one video could change your life for the good or the bad. But when we think about how life goes, life is truly unpredictable for the good or for the bad. But it's up to us to really stay the course, do our part. If we're living every day, oh yeah, mindfulness is a must. If we're living every day, if we are taking care of ourselves, Focusing on the things that matter, not getting caught up in the foolishness, so to speak. Then you kind of have that fulfilled moment. And that's the thing. Everybody should feel fulfilled, feel content, and have joy in life. And those are the ultimate goals. If you don't have joy, peace in life, then what do you have? That's what we really should be working towards. When I tell people, okay, yes, I'm... I do a lot in my life, but there's also a lot that I say no to, believe it or not. There's also protecting my boundaries and all that. But it comes down to joy and peace. My top priorities, no matter what I talk about, is going to be joy and peace and being content. Because, one second. Got a text about the game. One second, people. But when it, I was saying joy, peace, and being content, those have been my like, like year-to-year goals. No matter what my theme is, no matter what is happening in my life. Years ago when I was burnt out, wasn't taking care of myself, was looking for happiness or looking for stuff in all the wrong places, it became... My goal every year was going to have joy and peace. So if something is disrupting my joy, something is disrupting my peace, it doesn't belong. And those to me should be some of the ultimate goals year to year. We talk about a new year, fresh year starting. Joy and peace should be at the top of your list no matter what. You should have joy. You should have peace. And a lot of people want to be happy. I always say happiness is fleeting. Just like life is fleeting, happiness is situational. Something can make you happy, and then something else can take it away. Hey, Jen, how are you? So strive to have joy. That is what the ultimate joy and peace. When you have joy and peace, can't I take it away from you? Because you've learned to be self-aware. I think that's where it starts. Going on a self-awareness journey. Knowing yourself. Tapping into yourself. Hey, how are you? Knowing yourself, tapping into yourself. Hey, Devin, how are you? That is where it is. That's where the joy, that's where the peace comes from. Because when you are self-aware, when you know how things impact you, when you know what your boundaries are in life, when you know what your limits are, when you are aware on a whole level of self, that's when you can tap into that joy and peace and say nothing's going to disrupt that. And that is what I strive for each and every day. So even in the midst of all this tragedy, the loss of the two people that have known since childhood yesterday, the things that we witness, everybody witnessed as a nation online, in the midst of that, 
You can easily be consumed by the what ifs, the whys, the sadness, all that. But then you can also have the joy and the peace in knowing that as it may be cliche, but everything happens for a reason. It truly does. And none of us know what that reason is. We can ask questions. We can ask why. But it's really not for us to know why. And I think in life, that is a big thing. It's not for us to know why. But as people, the human side of us want to know why. So we're going to question why. Why is this happening? Why did that happen? I used to be like that. But then I started switching it to instead of why is this happening to me? It becomes a why not me? So why not? May not be proper English, but instead of saying why did this happen? Why not? We don't know. It's not for us to know. When you see things, it's like, it's beyond me. There are things that are beyond us. Yes, joy is deep down in the soul. And when you have that, that's what matters. Nothing can take your joy away and nothing can take your peace away. Only if you allow it and you control a lot of that. (laughs) Exactly. What are we going to do with it? That's what it is. It's not for us to know why. It's what are you going to do with that? See, there you go, Steph, preaching. What are you going to do with it now that you see certain things that have happened? Now that things are happening in your life, is that a question of why me? What are we going to do? When we see tragic losses, if you're just joining, I was talking earlier about two people that I've known since childhood, one older than me, one the same age as me, that both passed away on yesterday. And we see this. And the thing is, a lot of times now, especially, we are so desensitized to passing away, people being unalive, that we move on to the next. But maybe things like this happen, says that for those that remain, to get our attention. Stop taking life for granted. Stop taking these moments for granted. Stop taking for granted that we all gonna live to be 80, 90, 100. That's what, those are the messages that I get from it. Is that I need to make the most as a person every single day with not only the stuff that I do in my life with my kids, but also those that are around me. Need to, we need to do the most. Make the most of those moments. Make those memories. Because nothing is guaranteed. Yes, and we still have purpose attached to our lives. And that is what I say. Every day that you wake up, you have a purpose attached to your life. And I believe those people that don't wake up, their purpose has been fulfilled. But it's all at different times. And before we could say, oh, I got time. We live in the 80, 90, 100, 70, even 60. Like, that was, um, like, we just, it was all guaranteed. But these days, you got people in their 40s, 30s, 20s, where this stuff is happening to them. Tomorrow's never promised. That is true. So it's up for us to fulfill our purpose, to do what we need to do, to live our best lives fully, whatever that is for us. And only you can define that. That's the other part. Only you can define You and your spiritual source, whatever it is, mine is God. Tapping into God, having that relationship. God's going to guide my path, and I know that. And that's only for me to know. Nobody else can define that. But yeah. Ooh, that was a deep word. Look, if I have to go into this game, y'all know I'm going to keep going. But yeah, that right there, I wasn't planning on saying all that, but But God, that's all I can say. Joy and peace, that should be your goal. Live for now. Live in the moment. Enjoy the moment. Don't take the moment for granted. Don't take anybody for granted. Because as Devin just said, tomorrow's never promised. The next minute is a promise. So you do what you do. Fulfill your purpose. Live your life. God is going to bless you when things happen around you. Yes, they're heartbreaking and yes, they hurt. But when you rely on faith, then you know that it happens for a reason. You may not understand it, but a lot of times it's to get people's attention. 
Hey, Kamaya, how are you? A lot of times it's for those that remain, as Steph said. It's bigger than us. It's deeper than us. And we have to find the peace in that. Yes, it's hard. We don't understand these losses. Oh, thank you for the hand heart. But we find the peace in that. As I said, we get the peace that passes all understanding. That's what it is. I am good. But yeah, everyone, so thank you for joining. I got to go in here to this basketball game for my girls. I appreciate each of you that hopped on here, talked to me. This word was for you. If you popped in for these, I think it was 15, 20 minutes that I was here, then it was definitely a message for you. And hope to do this again soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Have a blessed one.